Hello everyone, uh, we will uh, continue with our lecture thing, uh, lecture series now, we are at lecture number 29 today. A uh, lot of uh, like uh, control synthesis, uh, I mean control analysis as well as synthesis techniques we have studied before, both in the like uh, classical domain a little bit in the beginning as well as uh, modern control domain quite a lot uh, later on. And then we have also seen this, uh, this uh, applied dynamics concepts actually before. So, now the question is can we combine the two and come up with uh, nice uh, flight control design techniques especially in the context of aircraft control. So, that is the topic that we are going to discuss today actually. So, the topics uh, today is something like this, uh, first we will uh, again quickly very, uh, very quickly rather we will uh, review the aircraft flight dynamics one more time just for uh, recapitulating all that thing that we have done before. Then we will also give an overview of automatic flight control systems, okay. then we will pro proceed with the frequency domain design techniques uh, followed by time domain, but probably the uh, after, I mean we will cover the only up to this today, we will cover like automatic flight control systems with frequency domain design essentially using some of these classical control design techniques actually. Next class we will follow, follow it up with uh, some of these modern control designs as well. Okay. So, let us see this, uh, a brief review of uh, aircraft flight dynamics, flight dynamics. Uh, essentially we have studied all these things before and just a recapitulation of what all we have done before. So, this is uh, geometry of a conventional aircraft, uh, you will see that there are various various subsystems of the, uh, I mean uh, on the aircraft and then the, each of the subsystems have their own role to play and whatever you, you see these darkened lines and all that there, these are all essentially you can think of as a some sort of a movable parts, they are not fixed part. And by moving these, uh, these surfaces up and down and things like that, you say essentially change the aerodynamics around the surface, uh, around the surface and hence it uh, generate uh, additional forces and moments, thereby you control the aircraft actually. So, essentially you have these control surfaces uh, like uh, elevators right here okay. and then you have this uh, ailerons which is somewhat here as well as here and then the rudder actually, so rudder is somewhere here. So, these are three primary control surfaces uh, acting on the, uh, on the aircraft. Other things are like uh, spoilers, slots and all that are also there, but they are not very frequently used. They are used primarily while take off and landing, but uh, not during flying actually. Anyway, so these are all uh, various components acting on the system. And then basic force balance uh, on a steady and level flight is obviously something like this. We have the weight of the aircraft uh, acting down, so something has to sustain that uh, that weight. So it has to be lift vector. And while producing this lift, we produce drag as well. And to counteract the drag, we have to produce the kind of a thrust actually. So this thrust, drag, lift, and weight balance each other in a steady and level flight. Side forces are typically balanced out actually. They are no, normally there, there is no force acting sideways. Okay. Uh, then about the moment balance, this is actually force balance what happens there and then there is a moment balance. Uh, in, in other words, if you want to rotate the aircraft, then you would uh, essentially need axis frame about which you need to rotate and that is where there is a, there is a concept of body axis frame which is uh, centered at the center of gravity of the airplane and the x axis uh, just uh, points towards the front and y axis to the right side, z axis to the down all that we have discussed before and any, any positive motion about the x axis uh, like right hand thumb rule sort of thing and that will uh, that will call positive roll actually. So, similarly if you grab this y axis by right hand and then uh, uh, your thumb pointing towards the y axis then the, the direction in which it will the aircraft will rotate is actually called pitching motion actually. And similarly this is a this allowing motion. So, roll pitch yaw are about the I mean the motions about the x y z axis actually. And this is what we discussed before, this is uh, this side of type of motion is called roll and primarily these, uh, these uh, black surfaces that you see here, these are ailerons, they will contribute towards this. And they are different, I mean they are deflected uh, not symmetrically, but asymmetrically. That means one is up, one other, another one will, will be down. So, that the differential force acting on the side of one side uh, of the wing over the other. Uh, creates a kind of a moment there and for which this aircraft kind of rolls actually. Similarly, it is uh, when you do this symmetric deflection of the elevator, it creates a moment about the seas in this, this direction, essentially it leads to pitching action. Okay. 
and then similarly it is like if you create that uh, deflection of rudder then it essentially causes the yawing motion actually. So, all these things we have seen before. Now, the question is uh, Dave, uh, in an automatic flight control system we have to generate all these control surface deflections so properly directly either directly coming from pilot command or even uh, coming from a guidance strategy, guidance loop actually that means uh, autonomous flight and all that. If, if the guidance thing is also in action then the reference command to follow and all that comes from there and all these control surface reflections we have to create appropriately actually that is the problem of uh, so called control system design for aircraft or autopilot design actually. Okay. While doing that uh, we, we have also derived this uh, what is called 6 degree of freedom model of the aircraft we have uh, seen each of the each of the variables we have discussed before these are UVW and that body axis component velocity components uh, and then the PQR are the roll rates, pitch rates and yaw rates about the body x, x y z component. These are Euler angles phi theta psi and these are these are like x y z edge seen from the from the inertial frame possibly situated on the ground actually. So, this is this this, this will give the coordinate uh, I mean the coordinates of the CG of the vehicle as it moves as seen from the inertial frame in that way. And then there is a negative h, h dot, h dot is actually essentially negative of z i dot actually if z i, z i is here the negative of that is, is height gain actually that way. Okay. So, anyway so this these are the what is called 6 degree of freedom of some model and, uh, and then we discussed about uh, linearized models okay, that means uh, if this is like too many variables and two coupled equations and all that uh, especially when you expand these force moments which are coming from aerodynamics x y z coming from aerodynamics things and uh, x t y t z t coming from thrust components and similarly l m n and uh, l t n t and t I mean these are all moment components coming from thrust and these are aerodynamic components uh, acting on the body axis. Once you expand these, uh, these coefficients and all that it takes a very complicated form and becomes difficult to analyze as it is actually. So, so what the, the next idea is we have uh, decoupled this uh, motion along uh, what is called longitudinal dynamics and then lateral dynamics actually. So, when you do longitudinal dynamics you consider this perturbation motion perturbed motions that uh, u, w, q and theta you club them together that is one side of the thing and in the lateral lateral mode you, you do that in the reverse I mean this delta V P R and, uh, and and delta phi basically. So, this these four variables and other four variables are cloud together sort of thing actually. Okay, so, you kind of decouple these variables from the other side because the, the, the in, in principle all the variables are coupled with each other but there are some strong dependency and weak dependency actually. So, you you club them together in a strong dependency sense and tell this is what uh, what is my linearized dynamics looks about looks like. So, essentially I have a state space form x dot equal to x plus b u where a b takes this form x is the definition like that and uh, u c is the control vector which is essentially delta e and delta t okay, that is uh, elevator and uh, thrust deflection angle actually thrust deflection percentage here. So, once I have this dynamics uh, these definitions and all are uh, like aerodynamic derivatives and all are defined that way. Uh, once I have this uh, state space model then uh, I can proceed with the state space uh, design or I have a liberty of even going to the transfer function approach and then talk about uh, some sort of a transfer function analysis and all that. So, this dynamics this four state variables uh, we still decouple that into two to each and then this is like what we discussed a short period mode. mode which is typically the, the aircraft vibrates quickly and it is uh, in and it subsides actually it does not go through a long the entire vehicle does not go up and down it is just a vehicle motion about its own CG actually roughly and that will lead to a small perturbation of the vehicle trajectory a little bit actually. So, that is essentially picture really depicted like this like uh, you have this change of angle of attack but it will die down very quickly okay. So, immediately you will have some vibration and then it will go actually so that is uh, heavily damped a short time period and it, it uh, while it does that uh, it does not really lose its velocity actually. Okay, so, so, that is the motion that you are talking about and this motion is typically given by these two equations alpha and q actually del, so essentially delta alpha dot and delta q dot they are given like this linear equation. Okay. And if you really want to have a state space uh, fun, I mean this uh, model getting converted to transfer function thing then you can we know how to do that. 
So, if it is x dot equal to x plus b u then we know ok this is uh, if given like x dot equal to a x plus b u ok uh, and obviously y equal to let us say c x that uh, that is to be taken care. Then y of s divided by is that uh, u of s is nothing but uh, this uh, c s i minus uh, a inverse uh, b ok right c s i minus uh, a inverse into b actually plus d but d is not there here. So, that is uh, uh, implicit actually. So, if you do this then you will get a transfer function actually. So, that is what is done here and then you get this delta alpha by delta e tra transfer function that way and delta q by delta e transfer function that way. Typically these are second order transfer functions and that is also evident from this is second order state space model actually. Because normally the I mean this this is another reason why you wanted to get back from four dimensional to say like two dimension because essentially you will end up with second order transfer function for, for using which we can do the design very easily rather compared to a fourth order polynomial and all that. So, that is what it is done here. Then long period actually is a reverse way of doing that I mean looking at the thing is not very short period oscillation and all it essentially the entire vehicle goes up and down up and down like that in a relatively long longer time actually. You know so essentially this uh, there is exchange of kinetic energy and potential energy the entire vehicle goes up then slowly comes down then again goes up then comes down like that. So, in that process it changes the pitch, pitch attitude, altitude and velocity ok and all this happens with uh, some sort of a constant angle of attack actually. Angle of attack does not change. Remember angle of attack is, uh, is the uh, I mean the angle between attitude of the vehicle with respect to the free stream velocity actually. So, that remains a kind of fixed actually here. So, if you uh, want to approximate this figure dynamics or long period dynamics then this is the way to do that uh, delta u and delta theta you try to club together. Okay, then this is the transfer function that you are taking and here this uh, this delta t that is the uh, engine deflection percent I mean engine uh, or thrust level percentage it actually plays a role also actually here. So, this is elevator, uh, elevator deflection angle differential angle of course, this is differential uh, differential thrust magnitude as seen as a per, uh, like a percentage of maximum thrust actually that way. So, once you again if you but these are remember these are two control actions ok and this one is very fast uh, and the compared to this delta t. So, you can assume that delta t remains 0 okay, if you assume 0 then it becomes like single control input again and you can again uh, come, uh, come up with this uh, this transfer functions for both delta u with respect to delta e or uh, and delta theta with respect to delta e also actually again these are second order transfer functions. This is all about longitudinal dynamics. What about lateral dynamics? Again, we can uh, do the almost the similar way. We club this uh, V, P, R, and phi together, uh, all in terms, all in the sense of small angle. I mean, small perturbation actually. And then we discuss about this uh, this uh, linear or rather linearized con uh, system uh, equation. And where this control is actually two controls now, and both are of similar uh, time scale. They are both are fast, and both have their equal uh, impact. So we cannot take away one, or we cannot assume that one is zero and all that actually. So we have to live with that. And then this this particular motion, we, I mean this analysis of this particular thing leads to kind of several uh, phenomena, and one of that is a directional divergence. That means. Uh, it does not possess directional stability. So, we will have this uh, side slip angle keeps on building. So, it goes to slowly it will deviate from its intended path and that is called directional divergence actually. And then you have say, spiral divergence that means, uh, if it is a gradual spiraling motion uh, and also in other words the angle of attack keeps building very fast as well as the, the it is not just a side slip angle it uh, aircraft also rolls actually. Okay. So, it uh, kind of uh, goes through the spiral divergence in a, in a fast way actually. So, this is a slow divergence it will keep on going slowly. So, aircraft does not turn but because of the side slip angle it just keeps on uh, going away. But here the aircraft also turns actually also rolls and all that actually ok. So, this gives you large uh, I mean this large spiraling motion and all that. Typically this is the this this motion the directional divergence is controlled by rudder whereas the spiraling divergence is controlled by ailerons. Ailerons will typically produce much more moment actually because I x even though the, the I mean the because the inertia about x axis is small. So, the ailerons in a moment is with respect to x axis in a moment of inertia. 
So, moment of inertia about x axis is small because mass distribution uh, along x axis typically is small actually. Uh, I mean, the, the distance of mass distribution from the x axis is typically small and hence the x axis is typically small actually. That, that is why this ailerons will have larger impact on the, uh, on the aircraft actually that way. Okay, so, and then there is an interesting phenomena which couples both of that and that, uh, that is uh, something called Dutch roll oscillation. That means, uh, it coupled directional and spiral oscillation both sort of thing. So, it will uh, first it will uh, turn towards the left, I mean it will roll towards the left. So, it will also diverge. So, it will go towards that. By that time, it uh, turns to the right, it will again come that side and then go that way. So, typically, it is like uh, how these Dutch people play skating on the ice and all that, actually, that way. So, that is why it is called Dutch roll oscillations. And it is typically controlled by using both aileron as well as rudder actually. So, together they have to be applied actually. So, if you really want to have Dutch roll dynamic uh, capture, I mean this uh, transfer function approach and all that, this is how typically it, uh, I mean the state space equation takes the form. And remember this is like every input will, uh, will uh, uh, every input in the sense both aileron as well as rudder will have impact on both the variables actually. So, if you want to visualize what is happening, then uh, for each input to each output, then you have to have, you have to construct these corresponding uh, transfer functions with respect to that. So, we have this delta beta over delta A and delta B, delta beta over delta R as well. Similarly, delta R over delta A and delta R over delta R. So, so all these things are uh, like second order transfer functions actually. Okay. And using that you can uh, try to design your control system actually. If you rely on classical control system, typically you need the single output, single input um, uh, models actually based on transfer function and that is what you use actually. So, that is like uh, a quick overview of what we have already done before. I mean this uh, we have derived six of equation, we have derived uh, linearized equation, we have discussed about this uh, lateral instability, longitudinal instability, I mean this uh, so short period and long period and uh, Dutch roll all sort of thing. This was just a quick overview. Okay. Now, okay, coming to the flight control system overview. Okay. What happens there is typically if you put all together, this is what happens in a flight control application actually. So, aircrafts typically have a number of sensors, okay, they have this uh, inertial measure, uh, I mean navigation unit which consists of uh, gyros and accelerometers all sort of thing. They will also have this uh, air data system, magnetometer all sort of thing actually, many, many sensors, I will uh, list them out in a, in, a, in a next slide or things like that. So, this sensor information will keep on go coming to the flight control computer and each uh, aircraft uh, carries a good flight control computer basically. Okay. I mean, if commercial aircrafts uh, do carry backup computers as well, right. So, that information keeps coming and what the aircraft uh, pilot wants to do and he can do a variety of commands actually. He can give flight path command, he can give velocity command, altitude command all sort of things and those information are also fed to that. And then this flight control computer uh, takes the help of flight dynamics into picture like its own uh, moment of inertia, mass, uh, I mean all sort of parameters actually aerodynamic modeling things like that. And then by appropriate computing, uh, I mean computation of the control command, it issues the command to the actuators basically. So, these actuators will essentially deflect all these, uh, this throttle position, rudder position, elevator position all sort of things and that is how the entire aircraft control surface, uh, I mean control system is activated actually. So, that is all what happens in a typical flight control system. Now, the question here is this uh, uh, like uh, a driving a very rough car which does not have any automatic uh, control support uh, and then driving that for a long duration is obviously straining actually. So, it cannot be done and in a higher uh, risk game like an aircraft flying and all that things like that, we need uh, certainly some support of uh, automatic control system for the pilot actually. Otherwise, uh, every I mean so imagine a case where a commercial aircraft pilot will keep on flying for let us say 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours from beginning to end he has to be consistently giving input command to the aircraft this is not feasible actually. Okay, so, it, so, that is why we talk about uh, augmenting this uh, as much as possible, augmenting this control system as much as possible with automatic control loss so that the pilot can uh, relax on the way actually. Uh, many of the things can be done in an automatic sense actually. Okay. So, that is what autopilot systems all about actually. So, as I told sensors, I mean this uh, aircrafts uh, can typically take a uh, lot of sensors and one sensor is altimeter which essentially gives height above the sea level and then they have air data system which uh, gives a host of information like, uh, like air speed, angle of attack, Mach number, air temperature all sort of things it gives. 
then the magnetometer sometimes which gives you heading angle compared to the remember magnets are typically aligned with with respect to north south so if your uh, base is aligned somewhere else then it will give you some sort of angle which is nothing but heading angle how it is uh, how the aircraft is oriented with respect to north south direction actually so that is the uh, heading angle it will give inertial navigation system it uh, is a big system of course it consists of accelerometers and gyroscopes and this thing these gyroscopes for example can be position gyro or red gyro like that depending on the application what you are talking here and then it are they are also supported by something called global positioning system nowadays which are essentially satellite based uh, navigation aids and all that actually okay so they they have their own uh, positive negative issues here i mean for example ins is a self contained uh, unit it doesn't need external support once you initialize it properly okay and then it acts on the newton's law actually so if your initial conditions are proper then uh, you can integrate this mx double dot equal to f and then x double dot is f i m all sort of things then once you know this x double dot information integrate that you get x dot and integrate one more time you would get x provided you know the initial conditions properly and similarly with respect to gyroscope you have the rotational dynamics into picture so i i theta double dot is torque and all that so integrate the theta double dot equation essentially so if you if your initial information is really good then it doesn't lead to too much of uh, accuracy issues but the they have their own sensing units and all that so they have their own filters in the loop and it's a complex unit essentially and nevertheless it doesn't require any additional external support actually okay so depending on the level of sophistication it can give you very good information actually okay but as the duration goes high and all that it they have this problem of drifting and they have the, the constant bias acting on that integration of that leads to large error like that actually so many issues are there so they now people talk about positioning position fixing so there uh, there is a, like a 24 satellite constellation and all that you select those four satellites and based on which you kind of find your own position uh, by in, by kind of computing some some unknown variables uh, with some geometric uh, constraints and all that so if you do that uh, then it essentially leads to very accurate position and it also gives you what is your ground speed speed with respect to ground actually okay remember air, sp air speed is coming from here air speed is with speed with respect to air but air can have some relative velocity with respect to ground so this ground speed can be measured directly using gps another constraint another constraint is like uh, gps can, can be very accurate but the the frequency of update cannot be very fast so it it is relatively much slower than ins system okay so now people talk about can you talk uh, can you really fuse these two systems that means ins gps fusion and all that actually so you'll get a lot more information around that actually that way anyway so these are a, a host of sensors acting on the on the flight vehicle essentially a, a good commercial aircraft and then uh, many of the transfer functions can uh, uh, like many of the transfer function for most of the sensors can be approximated simply by again actually remember each of the sensors are uh, are dynamic systems by itself they sense uh, not immediately instantaneously but they have their own sensing mechanism which essentially excites the internal system and things like that but the but the point here is this uh, their settling time is very fast compared to uh, the settling time of the aircraft itself so any time you want an information the information is typically there actually so that way so that means uh, the uh, most of the transfer functions can be just approximated with a gain ins instead of a dynamic system actually now uh, how about actuators i mean that is ultimately what will excite the control systems uh, and these actuators consist of variety of things so one is electrical actuators other one is hydraulic actuator sometimes pneumatics are also used and typically these are first order systems uh, whereas electrical system actuators are typically sec second order systems in general but they they can also be approximated as a first order system with a small angle displacements and all that if you really don't demand too much of deflection like uh, pin deflections from the system then the do no need to kind of approximate that with second order thing you can very well go with the first order system as well actually and then there are ideas like uh, you can combine the uh, this actuator benefits and all you can talk about il, like electro mechanical actuator and things like that so electro hydraulic actuator i mean th there are like uh, combinations of that actually so this will play a role in the in the automatic control system design actually for the entire vehicle now applications of automatic flight control system uh, how do we kind of uh, design this automatic system for the aircraft they can talk about variety of things 
And first thing that comes to mind is cruise control system. That means uh, uh, once the pilot takes the aircraft to certain altitude, sets the direction and things like that, for a large duration, I mean it has to just continue flying like that and that is what is called uh, cruise control and in that is the segment where pilot needs to be really relaxed actually. So, that means that is the segment we design variety of cruise control systems and one thing is uh, what is called attitude hold that means the angle angular positions of the vehicle and all so can be hold like that. Okay. So, that is uh, called attitude hold essentially this is to maintain the pitch roll and heading angles actually. So, any dispersion of those angles needs to be nullified. Okay. Suppose, suppose you want certain pitch angle, certain roll angle and things like that, let us hold it actually. That is the easiest thing that you can visualize actually. Next comes to mind is altitude hold, that means you really need to maintain a certain height actually. Okay. So, that is uh, these are all regulatory systems, remember that. That means, the, there is a, some value I want, any perturbation around that I want to nullify actually, that is that's the kind of problem that you are talking here actually. And then there is a speed control mechanism and this one, this one has come to cars also by the way. Okay. So, speed control is essentially to maintain a constant speed or Mach number irrespective of whatever local phenomenon of uh, local phenomenon of let us say change of angle of attack or change of uh, like a drag value and things like that. Then you can uh, the automatic speed control mechanism comes to picture and either it increases the power of the engine or decreases the power of the engine. So, that so that the entire ultimately the speed is maintained actually. And that is essentially has come to cars actually, lot of commercial cars have speed control, essentially they call it as cruise control actually, that they also call, the, call it as cruise control. So, it nothing but it just simply maintains the speed no matter whether you are climbing a hill or you are going down the hill or you are going on the plane highway basically either way. Okay. And for obviously, for safety purpose and all the, the, the cruise control is cancelled once you put a manual brake and things like that, because after that you, your car should not be again speeding up and things like that. But again once you take out the brake and you see okay, nobody is there on the path for, for kilometers away and things like that, you can excite the speed control again, this cruise control for the speed again and again you do not really need to kind of control the speed of the vehicle manually by changing the petrol pedal or, or accelerator actually. So, very same concept is there in the aircraft and essentially the idea started from the aircraft by the way that way. All right. So, next level is what is called stability augmentation system. The, okay. This this is essentially cruise control system it will fall under variety of other things also. This is just one thing altitude hold, attitude hold, speed control hold all that. The other thing is what is called stability augmentation system. Okay. The stability augmentation system is essentially for done for two reasons. One is first of all stability enhancement, that means uh, let us say your aircraft is uh, very marginally stable or it is really unstable like uh, let us say fighter aircraft and things like that. Then many times you want to make the aircraft uh, behave as if it is a stable vehicle under the influence of continuous controller actually. So, if the control system is actively taking part, it is actively excited, then th under that uh, the, the, the part of the system behaves as if it is a stable system actually and over that stable system you can still excite the system with further input I mean that is that is also there. But in general uh, this uh, the stability augmentation system means that you you, com you compute some sort of a uh, component of the control along uh, I mean with which the plant will behave as if it is a stable plant actually. Okay. So, that is the first thing. And normally the second uh, thing which is related to the first one is something called handling quality. I mean handling quality is like uh, the ease of driving a car, I mean you can visualize it that way. Uh, so, that is uh, like uh, suppose you want to drive a car, you feel okay, this car is easy to kind of drive, another one is not and things like that. There are variety of reasons. The thing is if it is too responsive, it is not a good car. If it is very sluggish, it does not respond well, then, then also it is not a good car. So, you have to have some sort of a good response coming from that and that is what is the concept of that kind of ideas are called handling quality in aircraft. How do you how the pilot can handle the aircraft in a good way. In other words, he really wants to go up and he, he wants to give give a command of let us say uh, change the altitude from uh, from altitude 1 to 2 then the aircraft should really change it in within that much time actually. And if he visualizes let us say let me pitch up the nose and think like the aircraft should pitch up and uh, it should uh, kind of quickly pitch up rather actually without too much of oscillatory, too much of overshooting things like that actually. So, those qualities are called handling qualities 
and had stability enhancement and handling quality are roughly kind of uh, coupled with each other actually. Okay, that is one thing. The next level of automatic flight control system is something called uh, like landing aids for example. So, when you really want to land an aircraft that is the most crucial part of, uh, of, an, of an aircraft flying by the way and that is the most dangerous part also in the entire flight uh, segment actually. So, that is where we need lot of aiding uh, instruments and things like that actually. So, first thing that comes to mind is alignment control there. So, uh, aircraft can come close to the city or close to the airport, but first it needs to align properly with respect to the runway. Remember runway width is not very much. If your alignment is just not proper, you have some angle offset and all that, the aircraft can can run away from the runway actually at the sideways. So, that angle alignment has to be tightly controlled actually number one. Number two is it needs to have some sort of a glide slope control that means, it has to continuously decrease its altitude from, from its cruise condition to the almost uh, 0 height with respect to airport runway height. Okay. And then it is also something called flare control. I will uh, touch upon a little bit as we go along, but uh, roughly speaking this, uh, this uh, align after alignment happens suppose this is runway let us say okay, this is runway then it the aircraft should come roughly in a straight line that is called uh, glide slope and then it should flare up in the sense that after that it cannot just go in a straight line and, uh, and if it goes then it will hit the ground in a very uh, bad way. So, what is done is after we, I mean very once the aircraft is very close to the runway they excite some sort of a exponential path actually. Okay. So, that while it touches the runway really and the vertical component of the velocity is manageable actually. So, this part is called flare and this part is called glide slope actually. This is flare okay, and this is glide slope. And before that it has to align actually. So, that is also like alignment actually. So, this is like alignment glide slope and for that is where that is where your control system also comes into picture actually. And in a reverse way it is also you can visualize that uh, automatic takeoff also has a reverse sequence basically. So, that is uh, uh, when you talk about landing automatic takeoff is also kind of uh, included in that actually. So, there are various levels of automation that we can visualize as far as application of uh, automatic control system for flight control applications are concerned. The most popular is of course, cruise control which is a regulatory mechanism and then these are the design side of the story. I mean this is what ha what happens as the aircraft flies in each of the flying condition and this is uh, happens uh, without pilot's knowledge probably uh, other than the fact that maybe test pilot will know that or something, but regular pilot may not even know that. Okay. So, that is that is going inside the flight computer in a built in manner actually and landing aids are anyway there and take off aids are also part of the deal actually. And there are secondary level flight control applications which are not talking here and these are like path design guidance uh, guidance design essentially where the aircraft will go what direction it will go what time it will reach and things like that actually. Okay. So, that is guidance level which is outer loop control sort of thing there is also a control loop and if you want to use control theory for that you can very well use it actually. And in missile guidance application it is, it is used heavily anyway. So, similar concepts are there for uh, aircrafts also actually. But that means the mission of the aircraft also becomes autonomous actually, okay. and that is that concept is very popular in UAV domain where the pilot is not there; it's unmanned aerial vehicle, so it needs to be guided in an automatic sense actually. Okay. In that sense, it comes very close to missile guidance actually. All right, so there are various levels that we we discuss here, and then this is like okay, the as far as techniques that we have studied, we have studied root locus, body plots, liquid plots, PID design. In time domain techniques, we have studied pole placement, eigen structure we did not study, and the but optimal control like LQR design we have studied and things like that. So, all these techniques we can become quite handy for, for addressing those issues that we discussed actually. Now, for the rest of the class, I will give you some examples and the some particular, we will not talk each and every system around that, we will just take you through a couple of uh, situations and couple of examples like that, which will give you some sort of a good feeling of what is going on actually. Okay. So, let us see I mean this frequency domain design approach that is what I was I am talking here and uh, remember this is uh, the while you talk here the frequency domain means we will largely confine ourselves to this and I will take the help of root locus and to some extent PID design concept actually. 
burden request or analysis techniques and I think they are also useful we are not going to discuss here. And here we will discuss uh, like some attitude control and uh, then speed control things like that actually. Okay. And uh, next class probably we will go through this uh, some of these time domain techniques and then we will follow it up with the concept of uh, again scheduling and things like that actually, that way. Anyway, so we will uh, this is where we are and some techniques we know some problems are at hand and so we want to kind of fuse them together. We want to apply those techniques for these problems actually. So, let us see that and the first thing that comes to mind is velocity hold control system. So, this is that speed control system basically. So, I mean uh, uh, anyway this entire class material is taken from this uh, this book it is a, a nice book as far as automatic control application for flight uh, control is concerned it is RC, RC Nelson from Agro Hill and uh, 1989 but I think there is a newer version also available. Okay. So, if you want you can buy the book also a good book actually to buy. Anyway, so this is uh, like uh, velocity hold control system what you what do you do? The obviously, in any type of control system and these are all based on this PID ideas and things like that. So, you have some sort of a reference command okay, that means uh, that is the that much speed you want to maintain and your actual speed can be something different. So, you give the throttle command uh, as a kind of um, uh, some constant gain times the error in the output actually that is the P part and that the if you really want to talk about uh, PID control then P control is like uh, K times E basically or minus K times E whatever depending on that. So, you have the output there and you know that this output that you are talking this delta, this delta U that means the error in the speed is actually a function of uh, this uh, error in this uh, reference command and things like that which is typically compensated by engine control, engine throttle control ultimately. Okay. So, here we have to have this uh, this error signal known to us first and for knowing the error signal we need to know what is my current U and what is my reference U. Okay. Typically this is actually okay, if you put delta U, delta U is a deviation and nothing like that that is 0. Delta U like I mean desired delta U is, all, uh, is typically 0, delta U is the difference of sp uh, speed basically reference speed. So, Anyway, so you have this actual information which you can uh, sense it or the using this uh, let us say air data system or the PS system and things like that. So, depending on what, what if, whatever is your required value you generate a kind of an uh, error command and then you multiply that with some gain or if necessary you kind of derive this uh, rate uh, so that you can talk about PD control or do this integral manipulation here. So, we can talk about PID control things like that. And ultimately, this command will go to that, and then it will pass through this engine lag also. This is what you can visualize that as an actuator system actually. Okay. Pass through the engine lag, and ultimately that will excite the system actually. So as long as this error is there, okay, and then this engine throttle throttle control is excited actually. Okay, and that way it will take it. Uh, I mean, it will keep on getting excited until it is uh, kind of zero. And it the correction happens in the proper direction actually with with this negative feedback in, in the loop actually that way. Okay, so uh, this is how this uh, this is mechanized. And once you know the each of the subsystem transfer function gain values things like that, there will be some sort of a gain tuning mechanism for this engine control throttle control actually. So those gain tuning you can uh, you can tune based on uh, time domain specification based on like uh, let us say damping specification and things like that. There are a variety of specification that you can talk about and based on that you can tune these gains and then uh, visualize or kind of realize this this control system actually. So, that is essentially the idea of uh, velocity hole control system. Now, coming to attitude control system, okay. what you do here is very similar anyway. So, instead of velocity you kind of sense the real attitude either pitch angle theta or roll angle phi or kind of yaw angle psi either way. And then depending on what uh, what is your uh, kind of uh, intention. So, you take the corresponding error signal either e theta e phi or e psi okay. so you and then excite the servo control mechanism to get a value for this uh, this delta actually either delta elevator deflection or kind of uh, rudder deflection or rail deflection things like that actually. 
Okay, this will be elevator reflection, this is L run reflection and this is L reflection. So, this is a typically small type of mistake probably, this is L run reflection delta A. Okay. All right, so that is how it is actually. So, essentially what you are doing, you are sensing the angular position, whatever position there. Then there is a desired angular position, let us say the pilot wants to pitch up, so that means he has given little bit theta command increase and things like that or he wants to roll, so he has given phi c command and things like that. Okay, so, that way this command is actually compared with this, uh, this actual command which is coming from the sensor in the, the, I mean whatever sensor you employ and then based on this error signal you excite this, uh, this control mechanism uh, largely done through PID control anyway. So, then generate this, uh, this uh, actuator commands actually. Okay. Then it will pass through this actuator system and uh, what you see servo control and all is like uh, actuators also in the loop actually that way. Okay. So, ultimately this will be kind of uh, coming out of the actuator actually, output of the actuator and it goes to the aircraft and excite the system actually so that way. So, it is not very much uh, different from what you have studied in feedback control actually. You have something uh, something like a set point regulation problem, you have some you got some command and there is actual command and there is kind of some sort of a error signal okay. and then based on this error signal if I was just multiply with again then I got P control. If I do this algebraic manipulation of like let us say differential uh, or differentiation or integration and things like that then I can be I can realize a PID controller actually okay. So, that is how it operates. Now, let us uh, instead of philosophy let us talk little more detail of uh, what is called roll attitude autopilot okay. and similarly you can talk about let us say pitch attitude and yaw attitude as well. So, I will pick up a roll attitude autopilot and try to let us say explain what all things goes there through an example probably. So, if you really see the roll attitude autopilot this is the mechanism you, you have got some sort of a roll command coming from let us say pilot and there, there is attitude gyro which will sense the sense of phi, phi actually the real phi. So, obviously, you have an error signal and it has to pass through certain control design to get this delta A basically. Okay. So, this delta A is a L down deflection that will uh, give that will be given to the roll dynamics and uh, I mean that will pass through the system model that you are talking about actually. Okay. All right. Now, the components of this as you see it here in the block diagram, we have a model for the roll dynamics which is uh, kind of important here based on that model we, uh, we do several things, we can analyze the things okay. and we can tune the gains actually. This gain tuning will depend on this transfer function what you have actually there because closed loop transfer function will be like this transfer function into that transfer function. So, obviously, this transfer function plays a role while tuning the gains actually. Okay. And uh, obviously, we need attitude gyro to, to find out what is our actual phi and we need a comparator thing to, to realize this, this comparison signal like, like plus minus and all that we get a error signal and obviously, we need an end on actuator to finally execute the command actually. Okay. So, these are all the various components that will go through the roll attitude autopilot and similar thing will happen for pitch attitude as well as your attitude actually. Okay. Now, with this uh, let us say you pick up some sort of a problem here. Now, okay, these are all parameters of the aircraft and all the where it goes and all it will go to that uh, that modeling part of it will not uh, concentrate so much on that uh, right now. We just assume that these numbers will go somewhere in the model actually that way somewhere in the transfer function. Okay. So, what you are telling here is uh, the, the aircraft has these characteristics okay. and the, our job is to design a roll attitude control system to maintain a wings level attitude now that means phi has to be 0 basically okay. and for the, the vehicle has this kind of thing actually and then not only that while assuring this kind of this wings level conditions and all from any initial condition suppose the aircraft is already rolled you want to make it wings level that is the problem actually. And while doing that we want to assure that this damping ratio uh, remains at 0 0.7, 0 0.707 and the, the natural frequency happens to be 10 radian per second I mean, that is the desired bandwidth uh, specification and all that actually. So, you have a damping ratio the, for that and you have omega n that actually on the, on the closed loop system. Okay. So, can we do that I mean that is uh, that is what uh, is the problem and you can assume that the L1 actuator and the sensor gyro can be represented by some sort of a constant gains only. So, they do not have this, this transfer function is coming into picture additional transfer function we assume that these are simply gains actually. Okay. So, can we design a control system to do the job actually. Okay. 
this is what you can do now if you see this delta phi to delta a this transfer function that you are talking here okay and this takes the form of this this one is so that means this is like a second order pole the two poles are there and there is on a numerator there is no zero actually okay so it is only a two pole system actually okay so forward path transfer function if you see this transfer function this is nothing but this to this transfer function okay delta a to e phi this is e phi probably okay you can put that maybe this is e phi okay delta a to e phi okay and multiplied with that fellow delta phi to delta a this is uh, like that right this to that transfer function delta a to delta e phi and then delta phi to delta a basically so that that transfer function so if you multiply these two transfer function you will get it actually and we are assuming that the 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 case is one so we essentially land up with unity feedback kind of situation where the analysis becomes easier any other gain is also fine in that way now the open loop transfer function if you see this is uh, okay, g of s is known to us h of s is known to us so g s times h s is nothing but that equally so uh, h s being one is nothing but simply g of s okay now these two gains i can multiply together and i can define something called k actually okay if i define these two multiplication k times uh, l delta a is nothing but k then my open loop transfer function takes the form something like k by s s into s plus 0.5 actually so obviously you have a pole at zero i mean uh, zero location zero zero and you have a pole at minus 0.50 actually okay so let us draw the root locus diagram now and if you do the root locus diagram so this is one pole here and one pole here okay mm -hmm. this is one pole in the origin okay and one pole here some for this uh, minus 0.5 location so the poles i mean if you apply the rules of the root locus or you simply draw it using metlab and things like that they will start from the pole they will go that way and then ultimately they will meet here and then they will diverge this way right i mean that's the pole actually okay so now once you have this this kind of a root locus you have to find out gains from there okay which gain will satisfy wherever you want to operate now why remember that one of the problem thing i mean what demands is that zeta is to be 0.707 now zeta is nothing but cos theta of uh, the where theta is this angle actually so cos theta is that 45 degree remember 0.707 is like 1 over root 2 sort of thing and 1 over root 2 cos 45 is 1 over root 2 that means if i draw a 45 degree line whatever line is that and wherever my root locus crosses crosses through i have to select a gain for that actually that way okay now if i select again that means i have to select again which is co which corresponds to this location really okay this is this this is what i need to select actually okay now this gain can be found out from because this lies on the root locus obviously it satisfies the the gain condition sort of thing i mean the magnitude condition that means if i take magnitude of the root locus it has to be i mean the open loop transfer function it has to satisfy one actually okay. open loop transfer function is this so if i simply take magnitude of that it will satisfy one actually so uh, that's why i do that and essentially it leads to like what value of this uh, when the that k and all that it leads to this this thing actually okay because that point you know the you know the s value s value at that point is known to us so you substitute that and then find out the gain value actually so gain turns out to be like that now the problem with this so that means uh, with by selecting this gain k and k is essentially this that means we are able to select a k a because we know this parameter l into delta a and all that this is param this this is part of this transfer function so once you know this into that is that value so obviously you sub divide by that value to get k a value okay, so that is how it will operate there but once you know the k a value that is not uh, sufficient and in the sense it satisfies this zeta value zeta condition because you have selected that way but what about omega n condition and omega n in this particular case if you go back and compute then it turns out it is nothing but 0.35 radian per second way less than the desired value of 10 radian per second that is what we wanted. So this cannot simply by gain tuning we cannot do the job that is that is the thing actually that is the message one thing can be achieved not both actually. So now how do you do both and that is where this uh, stability augmentation system comes to picture and that is uh, okay observe this condition now let us say we somehow extend this uh, this line actually okay now some point of time so remember this this is nothing but omega the magnitude of this length length gives us omega n actually 
that means if I keep on moving along that direction obviously my zeta remains constant because angle remains constant and some point some uh, I will get the, omega, the desired omega n actually. Okay. So, this point happens to be this, that is that omega. Now, the problem is the root locus has to pass through that. Now, if the root locus has to pass through that, then this pole location P1, what was earlier at minus 0.5, has to be shifted to point P2, somewhere to still left, uh, I mean further left to this P1 actually. But this location of poles P1 uh, is coming from the transfer function of the aircraft dynamics, which you do not have a direct hold on actually. Really, if you want to put the pole there, then the only way to do that is go back to the design stage and have a larger wing span actually. Like, uh, but that is not an option for the uh, then I mean aircraft has already been designed and we our job is to do the control system loop in that. Can we do the thing by augmenting the system in an artificial with an artificial control system actually? That is the problem there. So, that is what is written here. Moving the pole P1 to P2 is impractical unless there is a increase in wingspan of the aircraft. So, that is not an option with us and hence uh, the, the cure is to have a stability augmentation system actually. So, we augment the stability so that it will see uh, the omega n that we require actually. Okay. Ultimately, the closed loop uh, root locus has to pass through this point or otherwise there is no, I mean, no hope at all. This point is the point which will give us the value of zeta and omega n both actually. So, closed loop pole, uh, closed loop root locus has to, I mean the, the root locus of the closed loop plant has to pass through that anyway. Okay. So, that way it has to be decided on that, I mean the, anyway, so that is, uh, we will see that and how do you do this actually. So, what you do here is instead of simply having this kind of a realization, what you see here direct realization with simply an actuator gain, I mean k sort of thing. Now, you have some sort of a two loop uh, transformer, I mean two loop some, some, some sort of a realization here, where they tell okay, not only I will give theta feedback that is what I was doing here, the only I was giving some only angle feedback. Okay. So, instead of that I will give you give something like a, I do not know this is not theta is phi actually. Okay. Instead of giving only phi feedback, I will give uh, some sort of a phi dot feedback, phi dot is tightly coupled with P anyway phi dot is p plus some some small components and all that. So, I take uh, p which is roll rate now, this roll angle and all that. So, this roll rate feedback I have to sense now. So, that means, I can do that only using a rate 0 not, not position 0 only. So, let me sense that with a rate 0 and then that uh, that information I will I will get it, I will fi find out that the, I mean this particular loop I will loop, close it first. Okay. So, if I close this loop plus the with respect to this loop, if I put a big box out here, then this outer loop is still there. The outer loop is what we discussed here already basically. Now, this particular loop I want to put one more loop which will which will kind of give me the desired properties that I want actually that we call as inner loop actually I L. Okay. So, this uh, this inner loop transfer function and things like that. Now, if you do this idea as this, this inner loop transfer function can be expressed as something like this delta p to delta delta a. So, that is that is given like a first order system actually. Okay. So, once you have that kind of a thing, then you know the, that uh, transfer function of the inner loop becomes like that for, for this example let us say. And ultimately, you can see that this is this is the transfer function of the, the, the kind of inner loop and things like that actually. Okay. So, what happens now? If you see this this closed loop transfer function for the inner loop and all, it is no more this s plus 0.5, you do not have to live with that. There is a gain fellow which is coming here and this gain can now be selected according to our wish actually, okay, because that is on our hand now. Okay, so, we select a gain in such a way that the poles are shifted far away actually, whatever, whatever we wanted here, this pole has to be shifted that way and all that. So, that one we can do by selecting a gain here actually. Okay. So, that, uh, that because remember rest into this 0.5 location was coming from this factor only. Now, this is not 0 0.5, 0 0.5 plus something that means S value is minus 0.5 minus k i l actually. So, it will go now minus 0.5 minus k i l that way, it will get shifted that way actually. Okay. So, that means, uh, this uh, this closed loop hole and I mean uh, this uh, root location all uh, for this augmented system, root locus for this augmented system. Will, uh, will not be like this dotted line, now it will be that dotted line basically. So, so, that way you can select an appropriate gain which will correspond to this value of the root locus actually. Okay. 
All right. So that is how it is done. So we have some we have uh, constructed some sort of inner loop system by doing some sort of a rate feedback, okay, which has uh, altered this uh, this uh, loop. I mean loop behavior. Okay. Alt uh, previously it was nothing. This loop was open actually. It was there, but the feedback loop was open. So once you put a feedback path, this this entire system behavior is something different actually. So that is the property that is helping you for shifting this pole location P1 to P2. Actually. That is how you will be able to do the job. Now, if you just see that it satisfies all the properties, there is a nice behavior, it settles quickly, there is a less over percentage overshoot and things like that. So, that means both fast response as well as less percentage overshoot and all that can be can be achieved actually. So, but for, but for that you need to have a stability augmentation system and along with that you have to have a regular control mechanism, regular, regular feedback of the position actually. Position, position feedback is essential as well as that rate feedback is also essential that way. So, stability augmentation in general uh, does this kind of a thing. Inherent stability of an airplane depends on aerodynamic stability derivatives, which you do not have too much control on that anyway. Okay. Then magnitude of the derivatives affects both damping and frequency of uh, both longitudinal and lateral motion that is all facts actually. Okay. So, the, uh, and also remember the derivatives are functions of flying characteristics which change due to the I mean during the entire flying turbulence they do not remain constant also. Okay. They keep on changing because remember aerodynamic coefficients are typically functions of Mach number, functions of dynamic pressure, functions of um, I mean alpha and things like that. Actually, okay. So, they keep on changing anyway. Now, what will happen is uh, what we are doing here is the control system which will provide this uh, artificial stability to an airplane having undesirable flying characteristics are commonly called as stability augmented system. So, that means part of the control is built in basically and then another, another part you excite uh, through different one actually. Okay. So, that is that is what is the idea of stability augmented system. So, we give an uh, let us say another example before we wind up let us say short period dynamics is something like this. Okay. We have, let us say this is this dynamics has poor short period dynamics and we want to augment that and then get a better short period dynamics. How do you do that? So, numerical values if you substitute let us say it is having something like that and this value being very small remember this is like uh, 2 zeta omega and all that actually this is that much. So, zeta is very small. So, it almost has no damping actually that is some oscillation uh, happens and it will keep on oscillating obviously, we do not want that. So, we want to have faster decay and things like that. So, then what you do okay, let us say delta E this is your actual command right that is what is coming from the pilot this delta E we decompose that as one is pilot input directly the other one is some artificial command which is like k theta dot actually. Once you put that in there then you put k theta dot directly here. So, this entire term part of that goes this side actually now, there is a k theta dot component and here is a theta dot component. So, that can that gets combined and hence you will get some sort of a closed loop dynamics like that. That means, 2 zeta omega n is not only this one, but it is this, uh, this one plus this one now, which is a larger number. So, we can have some sort of a I mean like uh, if you saw omega n square is that much still that is there. So, that means, zeta value is quite high now actually and by varying k value this is your tuning parameter here. Okay. If you vary k value that means, various components how much you want to kind of artificially give input the moment pilot gives an input your any you know, additional input is automatically generated. Now, how much of that you generate is a, is a tuning quantity actually. So, by doing that you can uh, augment this uh, this uh, zeta you can manipulate this zeta and that will essentially lead to desired damping actually. So, that is these are all stability augmentation system. So, then other, as I told other applications will include landing system which is like uh, alignment control, glide slide, flare control we have discussed all that and more details you can find on the book probably I do not have too much time to discuss on all these details and things like that actually. So, with this exposure we will probably stop here thanks for the attention continue further with the modern control applications and all in the next class actually thank you. Thank you.